Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing the get to know the romance reader book tag. <laughs> Okay, to be quite honest, I'm doing this tag because I have two tests coming up this week and I didn't have any videos <laughs> planned. So I guess you're stuck with the tag video because my creative juices are not flowing recently and this is the only idea that I have for a video is a tag. But I'm actually really excited to do this because I've been seeing this tag everywhere. So it looks like the creator of this book tag is Brie from Falling for Romance. I believe it is a book blog, so I will link that down below for y'all to check out. Question number one, what is your romance origin story? How did you come to read your first romance novel? I've always really loved romance in books. I always growing up would not read a book unless it has some kind of romance in it or else I wouldn't read it. I needed that part of a book to help me enjoy the book. And growing up reading any kind of book, I loved the romance or the kiss scene, the first kiss scene, going on a date scene. I loved that kind of stuff in books. I loved it. So what I would do, and I still do it to this day, but I do it differently. So this is before I knew about little tab stickies you could put in a book. Yeah, I used to dog ear my books. Don't hate me. <laughs> so I would have the book and whatever page had a kiss scene on it or a date or something really sweet or romantic, I would dog ear the bottom of the page to come back to if I was really wanting to get in a sappy romance mood I would reread only the lovey scenes. <laughs> I have that in all like the selection books, The Hunger Games, Divergent, I have it in all of those books. I've done it to every single book I've ever read but now I do use tabbies to mark those scenes in my books. But I think the book that made me curious or made me want to start getting into actual romance romance books would be a Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I read this when this came out when I was in high school, maybe a sophomore. I just loved Feyre and Reese so much and I just needed that that tension, that angst with, with people. I needed to read more about it. So I picked up so many different romance books after that. I don't really remember the first full-on romance book that I've ever read. I'd have to go deep dive into my Goodreads, which I don't really want to do right now, but I believe this is what got me into full-on romance books for sure. Question number two is if you could be the heroine in a romance novel, who would be the author and what's one trope you'd insist be in the story? Okay, to be honest, I would really love Christina Lauren to write my book. <laughs> I would really love either Friends to Lovers or Hate to Love because I those are my two favorite romance tropes. The Second Chance Romance Friends to Love, ooh, that's so good. I would love that actually, the Second Chance Romance and their friends to lovers. I want that in a book by Christina Lauren, for sure. <laughs> Question number three is, what is a romance you've read this year that you want more people to read? Wait For You by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I've talked about this book nonstop. This is probably my favorite book of the year or one of the favorite books of the year for me. This is about our main character named Avery. This is new adult, by the way, who goes to a new college all the way across the country to escape her really troubled past. She meets there a boy named Cam, who helps her overcome all of her struggles and helps her discover who she is and maybe ends up falling for him in the process of that. Just by the way, there's a trigger warning for rape in this book though. This is just gutting and wonderful and the audiobook is fantastic. I originally read this through audio. I'm, I'm in love with these characters and the story so much and I think I really want to reread it before the year ends. Question number four is, what is your favorite romance subgenre? What subgenre have you not read much from? I actually really want to read more historical romance. I really do. The only ones I've been really into are Tessa Dare books that are over there. I've read two of them, I believe, this year. I really want to read more historical romance for sure. I really love historical romance, just some of them are hit or miss from me. So I need to find the good ones for sure. And Tessa Dare has the good ones, so I know I'm good with her. Let me know down below some historical romance authors that are really, really good. I know Eloisa James and Julia Quinn are really good. Um, Ashley from Ash Art Books talks about them all the time. Let me know some other ones too. <laughs> but I guess my favorite subgenre, I guess just a regular contemporary romance. That's what I read a lot of or new adult. Either one of those, I think, are my favorite, for sure. Question number five is, who is one of your autobio romance authors? I actually have a few. Christina Lauren, actually Mila Gray. Mila Gray wrote Come Back to Me, 
and she wrote two other books. Her fourth book is coming out later this year that I'm really, really excited for, so I always pre-order every single one of her books. And this is like a military romance, by the way, so if you're into military romance, I totally recommend Come Back to Me. Colleen Hoover is another one. Emma Hamm is another one. She writes fantasy romance that I'm in love with. Question number six is, how do you typically find romance recommendations, Goodreads, YouTube, podcasts, or Instagram? I would say YouTube. YouTube is my only social media platform that I usually use besides Twitter and I don't really find book recommendations on Twitter. Um, I find it through booktube, through my booktube friends, through booktube recommendations. I actually find a few actually on Goodreads through my friends on there too. So I would say Goodreads and YouTube are my main ones. Question number seven is what is an upcoming romance release you're excited for? I mean that next Mila Gray book is coming out that I'm really excited for. I know that Helen Huang is coming out with a new book in her series soon. They just came out with the cover for it. Oh, I'm actually also really excited for the next book in like the Fixer Up series. I really, really want to read that one. And I really, really want to read the next book in Waiting for Tom Hanks. I don't know when either of any of those are coming out though. I don't know if it's upcoming, but they're the next ones coming out. <laughs> so those are all the ones romance I think that I'm most excited for, for sure. Question number eight. What is one misconception about romance you would like to lay to rest? This isn't really about romance, it's about romance readers. I am very devout in my Christian faith and I am waiting for that godly man to come into my life. And I've met a few godly men. A few of them have been on online and they find out about my booktube channel and they end up ghosting me after they find out about it actually. When people find out that I read romance books, sometimes they think, oh my God, she must be really into the sex <laughs> or must be like wanting to do all of that stuff or I don't know, wanting to just read smut all the time to do it. I get shamed sometimes because some people say, oh, you're reading porn all the time, which no, <laughs> it's not. I'm not in it for that. Sometimes, yes, it adds to the story, but I'm not in it for that. I'm in it for the connection and the relationship and the growing between two characters, falling in love. That's what I'm in it for because I've never personally experienced anything like that. And like, uh, it, uh, it really grinds my gears because these people don't even like ask me about it. They just assume, oh, she must really be like into all that stuff, which I'm actually not. I'm actually waiting till marriage. I've never done anything like what any of these people are doing in any of these books. The most I have ever done with a person is kiss a guy twice. That's the most I've ever done romantically ever. I'm waiting for the time in my life for that to happen. It grinds my gears so much for <laughs> for people to assume and to think that romance readers just are in it for the sex, which I'm not and I'm not like that and most of the people in this community are not either and I wish that people would assume otherwise. Anyway, that is my TED talk. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Anyway, next question. <laughs> question number nine. Who is the most recent romance or reading content creator you have come across that you'd like to shout out? I came up with a vlog a couple videos ago where I shouted out a few content creators that were new, booktube newbies. <laughs> I think there were three girls on that list that read romance books, so I will link them all down below to check them out. They're very, very new, so go watch their videos. Before I subscribe to those. I um my most recent one before them was Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads. She's actually one of my friends here on Booktube and I really 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 trust all of her opinions on romance books and I love her recommendations a lot. She gives great recommendation videos so totally 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 go check her out. And question number 10 is if someone had never read a romance book before and you asked them to recommend the first three romances that came to mind as places to start, what would those recommendations be? First one would have to be Waiting for Tom Hanks by Carrie Winfrey. Um, this is about our main character named Annie who really really loves rom-coms and she's waiting for her, her Tom Hanks to walk into her life, the romantic sweep you off your feet kind of man, and she might end up falling for a man who is the complete opposite of that. This takes place on the set of a rom-com. She is writing her own rom-com, so I really love this. It's all fade to black scenes. I think anybody who hasn't gotten into romance yet would really appreciate this book as a great romance starter book. Next is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is a hate to love romance set in an office. These two assistants hate each other, but they might end up really liking each other and it has all that angst and tension between these two characters and it's not all that steamy there's not many steamy scenes in here i don't think but you do feel that tension between the two and i think this was a great 
starter book as well. And lastly, we have Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina and Lauren. So this is about Josh and Hazel who were friends in college. Hazel's always had like a little bit of a crush on Josh, but Josh has never really thought of Hazel more than kind of like little sister figure in his life. And he, I love Hazel. She's I picture her as like Jess from New Girl. She's like quirky like that. She likes to collect pets and I collect pets. So I love that about her. So Josh and Hazel end up setting each other up on dates and they go double dating together with the person they set the other person up with. But they end up every night, they go on a date, end up like hanging out together at the end, like watching a movie or chilling or doing something like ditching their dates to be with each other. I love this book. And again, I think it would be great romance starter as well. Anyways, there you have it. That was the get to know the romance reader book tag. I had a lot of fun answering these questions. Uh, be sure to go check out all those booktubers that I recommended down below. Also, let me know down below what your favorite romance book is because I need to add more to my Goodreads TBR. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching and I'll see y'all soon in the next one. Bye!